Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2. The only way to describe the player in the bottom right, in the red, I give you the final boss. It is Duck. In my not so humble opinion, the most entertaining player in the world right now. And his challenger. And I think the most accurate way to describe anyone on the other side of the map who isn't named Maru, or maybe Sarah. But his challenger, a stalwart Protoss. It's D Mawa, the wall. Showtime. The German Protoss, known for being the immovable object in front of a potentially unstoppable force. I don't know which side you're on, but I'm on the side of good games for the fans. And these two, every time they meet, well, Showtime is, at risk of sounding a bit uh, condescending, the best punching bag in StarCraft 2. Well, not so much a punching bag, but instead a, a wall that you break your knuckles on. Uh, as he has made for some of the most entertaining games. Usually, games he loses in the last couple years. And uh, I think we got the recipe for a new one. So if you like what we're cooking, well, hopefully you'll like this video, this cast. Jimmy, what are we at? What? 1,094. Get 1,094 likes. I'll cast another series and i'll probably do it anyways but thank you for tuning in hopefully you've had a good day so far and hopefully it's about to get a little bit better today dark versus showtime best of three pvz uh we'll see what dark has in store with us for us rather i think showtime will bring us uh, something pretty pretty standard something we've seen maybe a couple times before but with an extra flare and an extra, well... Okay, well, killing five drones with two adepts. That really saves me from all that filler commentary. Because five drones with two adepts is about three, maybe four too many. That should not happen. Dark is down to 27 drones. He already was building a bunch of links, so... Yeah, that... That wasn't in the script. Uh... Okay, well, that is certainly not uh, a great way to start things off. He's going to deny the probe that was headed for the third. The oracle lights up and burns away some of the lings, but not nearly enough to save the probe. A second one will come down, but Showtime's already out to a nine-worker lead. The zerglings are not going to be enough to deny the base permanently, but a hiccup there. And a single probe killed. Otherwise, almost nothing. There, There's nothing else that, that Dark's going to be able to get. Showtime is locked down, buttoned up tight. He set his uh, adept on hold position, adding in a few more. A couple gases at the natural indicate he's going to be going for heavier tech. And with the oracle on the other side of the map, he's going to have every revelation he could. And so far, the only revelation will be the lack thereof. As Dark only has drones, queens, and a few zerglings in production. No quick lair, no roach warren, none of these silly shenanigans that may... Either end the game early or, well, more likely lose it. It is uh, dark on the back foot here. After an inauspicious start, losing far too many drones to those early adepts. I can't tell you. I, I can tell you, and I will tell you, believe it or not. Whether you like it or not. Or this video or not. But losing that many drones early. He loses one oracle here, but six, seven drones down. The second oracle may have been... The costly one. There's another revelation, but it really cuts into it because the most important. Well, Brenda! Ooh, that was nice. Um, the most important part of Zerg early on that is the most difficult to manage for new players and even for less new players like Dark is larva management. Before you have the queens out, before you have three bases up and running, especially with larva inject, your larva is very limited. So the drones do not just cost you the minerals that they they cost to build, and also the um, ones they could have mined, but it also costs the limited amount of larva you have in the early game. There's a max of three on each hatchery before you get um, before you get to uh, larva inject. So, that was a lot of potential uptime on building more drones. And it continues to add up, by the way. 17 drones down so far to just that singular probe. So, overall, Dark 
hamstrung here by the and and I love how Showtime is doing it. He's not risking anything. He lost one out of three oracles. The second one, that is a one HP oracle. So you know, maybe getting looking to prove me a bit wrong here with his fancy oracle micro loses another one. But as long as he still has one, yeah, that that's uh, hedging a bit. But as long as he still has one, he has revelation. Wow, Showtime with a classic push out. Right now, he's feigning aggression while teching up behind. These units will force a response. They will force units out of dark. But behind it, he's got a dark shrine, a rubble bay, charge, and four more gates. Showtime is actually relatively weak right now. But by being up in dark's face, he's forcing units out and controlling his production yet again. This should line up into a fourth. The one thing we're missing is a fourth nexus. As Showtime builds a, a bit of himself here at the third. Walling it off with four gateways. And sending a few units to escort the probe. Um, alright. Very brave Zergling chases down the entire army. Dark baited into building. Well, he's got 77 drones. He does not shy away. I will say, a lot of players say that we'll stop at one macro hatch. And Dark only has one so far. But why not three? Why not four? There's so many times when we see Zerg players in the later game have 1,500, 2,000 minerals in the bank. They're not maxed out. They run out of larva. Those queens, um, relatively fragile creatures uh, against maxed out armies. Um, but Dark is one of the few players who will build three, four macro hatches because at the end of the day, if you can't spend your money, what's the point of having it? Showtime, on the other hand, I almost never have any pet peeve complaints about his production. It's so um, transparent what he's trying to accomplish for us in the production tab. Maybe not so much for Dark, who's... Oh, okay, I'm not sure what this is. Coming back for the festival. I don't... It's a weird uh, parade headed through. At least the Archons can slip through the non-existent doorway there. Bunch of Banelings on the way. Dark is maxing out. Showtime at 76 probes. We've had a, a, quite a passive game, aside from that early skirmishing. But here comes the Ravagers. The Zerglings. Banelings. Banelings Bane speed is completed. And plus two melee is on the way. Though still quite a ways off. Plus two ground attack. For showtime he's also warped in some dark templar wait does he has he just avoided the high templar entirely that's an interesting trend we've been seeing lately just not even bothering with the high templar instead dt archons which are slightly cheaper on gas though significantly more expensive on minerals banelings rolling into the mineral line the probes will uh, he's not even bothering to pull the probes away you know there's not many banelings connecting with the army there. He loses 14 probes, but it costs Dark more than that number of banes. Overall, not a bad trade for Showtime. He keeps the, the core of his army alive, loses a couple Archons, but and that had to be intentional. He intentionally sat there, did not pull the probes. Did not, a lot of the time, once they're already in the base, pulling the probes away just makes it easier to kill them. So, might as well maximize it. Here comes Dark, but Showtime already has a stasis boxing out. Disruptor shot. Lands on a bunch of Banes. Another shot at the front line. Another shot flung out. That one doesn't find anything. But Dark is forced to split. The Archon stasis on the flank holds the line. And the Zealots are warped in. And the tables are turned. And Showtime turns it around onto Dark. He deflected the Zergling to the right flank. He cut through the Ravagers to the left, and he obliterated the Banelings in the center. Showtime. With a masterclass defense, the Zerglings are unfrozen in a world devoid of Zerg. And Showtime's still very much intact. Yes, his supply is not maxed. He hasn't yet made the transition to Stargate, which to me means he thinks he can win or at least get a, another greater advantage on the ground. And there are no lurkers. There are no vipers. There is no hive. So, 
Without those things, Showtime still has plenty of opportunity to move up. If he's maxed out with as good or better upgrades, that Protoss ground army is still a real and present danger. But so are these plus two Banelin. They one-shot those Urgans. He warps in some Stalkers. A better defense. But Dark just goes right through the pylon. The Stalkers hold! Oh, the plus two Banes are so dangerous. But Showtime musters a defense in time. What a show. Ah, Showtime living up to his nickname here. Proving it. Just the, the best defensive Protoss probably in the world. The Archon count. Oh my. How many? He's got 13 Archons right now. Well, there is not a ghost in sight, even with a cloaking device. That is a fully operational Archon. So Showtime comes across the map. A whole lot of Banelings. Exploratory Nova. Down goes one of the Ruptors. The other one softened up and taken out. A whole lot of Zerglings here. Zerglings not known for their effectiveness against Archons, but it's a numbers game. I right know the numbers, though. The numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster. Dark is maxed out and still looking mi mighty impotent against that many Archons. He's got to find a fight where he can. He's looking for this round. In fact, Showtime may be a bit conservative as not willing to push forward doesn't want to get surrounded he's well wall's not known for their aggression the archons filing in the concave it stretches across the screen when do we ever see protoss armies like this juggles a couple bruised archons back gives them a chance to reshield the roaches and ravagers archons not easily able to get in range of things and uh, the Ravager count is high enough. Everyone goes back to their corners. Well, not really corners, but at least their side of the map. Adrenal glands is complete. Attack speed upgrade on those Zerglings. Plus three attack for showtime on the way. Plus two ranged and melee. Uh, plus three melee for Doc. Filling in all those attack upgrades. No one. No one has upgraded defense. No carapace, no shields, no armor. All attack. There are so many units that essentially ignore armor for one reason or another. Between the plus two Banes doing terrible, terrible damage and disruptors one-shotting every unit in this army. Well, here come the Archons. Ravager shots. Going to find some connections, but they're able to weather it for the most part. The War Prism well protected. The Archons boxing out. And a warping of Stalkers will complement the army, giving some range support. Showtime, a disruptor in the mix here, pushes Dark back and allows the Archons to finish off the base. Dark kiting from the right flank. Still so much more going on. One of the few uses for this actual UI hidden cam that I've found, and not just for dramatic effect, this fight just keeps happening. The corrosive bombs knocked down the war prism. But the Archon count has dwindled to nearly nothing. A single Archon at the back. Dark manages to pull together a defense. Though at what cost? Even the Oracle still. 22 Archons have been lost, and that won't be the end. I, I, I don't know how many games I've ever seen 22 Archons in general. Let alone, he's, he's built and lost, like... Showtime is at over uh, about 1.5 Archons per minute, or APM. The most important stat, if you ask any Metal Leaguer. Showtime expanding right down the center. His army not great when it, when it comes to maneuvering around. It is, while a, uh, it, it's not particularly finesse-oriented. Archons not known for their agility. And Dark managed to to stretch that army into bite-sized pieces and eventually whittle it down. Which, well, I'm surprised we don't see any infestors. We don't see even maybe swarm hosts on the table here with this many Archons. Not that they're horrible against them, but uh, it's a range issue. 
DT Archons, by the way. Not even... There is not a Templar Archon. The Zealots fighting the Banelings like it's the Legacy of the Void trailer. Showtime reinforcing the high ground. More DT Archons warped in. It does save him. So a DT Archon is 250-250. Oh my god, will that Evo Chamber bleed out? I think it is technically bleeding out. Yes, he's losing HP. There's a small chance his Evolution Chamber will bleed out. Ooh. At 250-250, whereas a HT Archon is 100-300. Uh, of course, you can mix and match, but that's uh, mostly frowned upon, though not illegal. Uh, the Protoss not known for being particularly progressive on that front. More Banelings roll in. Try to deal with it. Disruptor shot flung out. A Ravager count. The Corrosive Biles trying to zone out the Archons. The Spray and Prey. Maybe enough. Stalkers warped in. Small counterattack. Ravagers are, are revealed. Felt weird to say. The words are kind of close together. But that Oracle still going. I think it's the one from earlier. He's only lost two. So yeah, he kept that third Oracle alive. Somehow Showtime manages to keep those Oracles at single digit HP. But Dark has remaxed. It's been an arduous process. Oh my god, he's bleeding out. He spread a creep tumor to save his Eva. Wait, is the creep spreading in time? Yes. And now. Okay. <laughs> what a weird scenario. The stasis. Not as good as it could have been, but definitely not bad at all. Oh, point blank. Disruptor shot. The Nova canceled by the Badelings running into it. So, you know, same net effect, I guess. I don't know. Zealots in the bottom left, Roaches in the top right, DTs and Zealots in the main. We had Overlord Speed uh, finally on the way to be able to catch up. The DTs being used uh, in their um, initial forms here. Free Archon. So weird to see so many DT Archons, but you know, if Showtime's doing it, it's probably a good idea. And the Hive! The Zealots! He gets it! The hero zealot at the, like, literally the last unit in the main, he gets the hive. And that immediately, I don't know how related that is, but Showtime starts at Templar Archives after sniping the hive. Which, no vipers, no ultras, no brood lords, and no uh, hive tech lurkers. I don't know if it's, I think it's mostly a coincidence that now he's just adding that in. It's just something he wants against this army. Well, Storm against a mid-game lair army. I think even if he didn't snipe the hive, he would have gotten it anyways. But it certainly helps because now Dark is limited once again to lair to actually hatch tech. Well, in this case, he already has a lot of the hive upgrades in the form of 3-3 uh, attack. As well as adrenal glands and um, baneling speed, all those things. So, but yeah. He's reset to hatch tech. Not that he's built many units outside of it. In fact, the only units that he needs a lair for that he's been building are the Overseers. Mainlings rolling in a lot of probes on the run. They left themselves an escape path. Disruptors cover their retreat. A single Baneling is still potential, but Showtime jumps to intercept. Get down, Mr. Probident. Uh, that sounded better in my head. No, it didn't. I didn't think about that before saying it. Of course not. That's not how these things go. Meanwhile, though, Dark still slamming on all fronts. All cylinders. He still has quite a supply. He's not going to be intimidated by a lack of hive. He didn't even restart a lair. He has the money for 10 lairs, pretty much. D didn't restart one. There's no way. Now, that I don't know if it's a matter of principle here. Um, it certainly isn't. That's just a mistake. But he hasn't restarted any lairs. So at the end of the day, if he ends up needing Overseers, or, you know, just one tech that isn't Ravager Ling Bane Ling, who would want- Oh my god, he's got 11 Archons. How many? What is the Archons? Well, he hasn't lost one since that last time I pointed it out. So Showtime only spends his Archons when he really needs to. And apparently that's that time. As a, a couple more. Wait, no, they're still alive. Wow. He is uh, quite stingy with them, actually. Only the major fights does he end up losing too many. Ooh, the Zerglings just ripping apart the Nexus. The probes manage to retreat. 
Both players down in the 60s now. But the Archon Ball, the probe's chasing down, but a few cannons and shield batteries will help stall out the attack. Ravager's in a tough position here. Archon's still dodging. Looks like he finally lost at least one more. DTs may need to be warped into the northern side. Reinforcements, where are they? A few more zealots, a warping of zealots as well. Another base that will isolate the top, the bottom left. I think he knows it's there. He saw a spore crawler there. How did he not see the hatchery? I have no idea what the circumstances were that that happened. Maybe that was after he killed it with the zealots. So he might not know a base is there as dark works to the top right, but this army needs to be beat. The disruptors are so dangerous right now. Showtime is actually bleeding out a lot of supply. I think the attack on the top right has claimed a significant amount of units as Showtime tried to defend it. He was trickling in zealots uh, and DTs and he's now lost. There's been 150 banelings lost. 450 zerglings. That... I, yeah, that is a little off-center, I think, is what we're zooming in on here, but... So, Showtime ends up losing a, a chunk of his army. I think mostly gateway units. The core here. 12 arc 14 Archons! I... Archons are very good units, especially if your opponent doesn't have infestors, doesn't have lurkers, nothing that can really meaningfully outrange them. Ravagers are good, but definitely not impossible to deal with. Pathogen glands on the way as Dark finally reaches for the infestors, but it might be a bit too late. It, even though... Wow, Dark has 150 army spikes. That is so much, Roach Ravager. What a fight we're having here. The Corrosive Bile, Spray and Prey, hits just about everything, but kills almost nothing as Showtime has built the highest effective HP units that Protoss can in Archons. The Disruptors pulls out a Disruptor drop and uh, comes up empty. Eh. Easy enough to dodge. Corrosive Bile's hitting both sides. DTs. There is a DT on the front. A few disruptors here. One good hit could uh, essentially rip the core out of Dark's army. And well, some. Well, okay, at least he got something. That was a little embarrassing on the <laughs> showtime. This aggressive disruptor drop clearly not his strongest suit. But mixing it in, trying to look for the shot. As he builds up his composition again, he... What is the income? Oh my god, about even. We're running out of mineral pet. Like, the map is mining out outside of the corners. The center Showtime had earlier. Comes up empty. Disruptors. The, the war prism lives. The queens are taken out by the DTs. Their stasis ward still, I think, from that single oracle that survived all this. The most dangerous... Why, why do you need sentries when you have disruptors? The most dangerous force field. Dark takes it out just in time. Sprays another round of corrosive bile. Disruptor negated for the most part. The banelings, some of them roll through. Showtime notices a bit late. And the banelings are burrowed. But Revelation will uncover them soon enough. Big round of zealots. An archon in the back as well. Dark still sharking around. Somehow, like, Dark is, has a higher supply, but I don't know where it is. I guess Roach Ravager is very supply heavy. But the army values, yeah, this is, this is the point here. Dark has 30 more army supply, but his army is worth almost a thousand, a thousand less. Because Showtime is building these high quality units. Whereas Dark is just throwing everything onto the board and seeing what sticks. The Banelings will trigger the stasis. Stasis is. Now, that doesn't... Wait, did I, did a spawning pool bleed out somewhere? Or are we just... I don't... There's no spawning pool in the units lost, yet there's no spawning pool on the field. So this math doesn't really check out. Unless he killed it himself. Maybe it doesn't count if it bleeds out because it wasn't killed. It just died, which is way more sad. It doesn't make the news. 
Hmm. Eventually, the creep withers, dries out, uh, and dies. And that's how it is. All right, circle of life. Showtime. Yeah, once again, I, it's not until I brought up the army value here that it really explained it. But his army, what it doesn't have in, in sheer numbers, makes up for it in, in sheer quality. The amount of Archons and Disruptors and DTs, these units that are just so difficult to deal with, unless you're over... One, you either have overwhelming force, or two, a bunch of very specific spellcasters, like Vipers or Infestors. And end of list. I don't... Oh, sprays up some cor- oh, he knocks down the prism because he stayed on a line with him. Dark manages to get some more. It looks like some- uh, a baneling? Killed 12 probes somewhere? I don't- 12 probes down. Showtime. Dwindles to 27. Dark shoring up his lead somewhat. Lead is uh, with an asterisk. It's plus three weapons. Plus two shields for showtime. Whereas Dark is sitting on 331. Plus three attack and plus one carapace for all flavors. God, they're just beating each other into submission. I, I didn't expect such a clear demonstration of uh, the unstoppable force versus the immovable object. But showtime refuses to give up meaningful ground. And Dark refuses to stop attacking at every angle he can. Showtime has put together some strong attacks, but has has not managed to land the killing blow on Dark. Overall, Dark has lost 10,000 more minerals, but 4,000 less gas, which is a crazy split we almost never see. Really kind of highlighting how this game is gone. Sometimes there's a disparity in who's lost more minerals or gas, but never is it is it that clear what type of units both players are going for. Dark at 175. Showtime's down to 21 probes. We're running out of gas, literally and figuratively, but Showtime comes in from both sides, clips his own zealots, but manages to cancel the base. Dark's army needs income to survive, whereas Showtime, in a low-economy game, the, the Archons and the Disruptors will thrive. More Ravagers, more Zerglings. The Disruptors looking for an angle. Corrosive Biles are chipping away. Showtime blunks forward. Ravager's around the back. You can't flank from that side, though. He's on the high ground. We haven't seen a recall this game, though. This might call for it. Oh, my God. Great splits out of Dark. Manages to dodge these Ruptors like it's his job. And very technically, I guess, it is. And he's pretty good at it. The... <laughs> Drowns burrow away from the Zealots, maintaining some of them. He still loses seven. Showtime. Bleeding out. But, well, Dark is losing a lot. Both sides, once again, just throwing so many punches and coming up slightly short. I, we're one good disruptor hit, but if he loses the ruptors, then Showtime can't replace them. Dark is mining from a relatively fresh base. I guess Showtime has one more base mining. Neither of them can keep more than one base alive. Not really. Dark has that right side base, but there's only so many drones. Corrosive Biles, Purification Nova, trading shots, firing across the bow constantly. Showtime is, uh, oh, he's, he can hit from the low ground, but the Corrosive Biles do force a dodge. That's such an awkward angle. He's got a revelation. A few Archons are committed to the right flank. Those Archons are so tough to deal with without the Ravagers. And... Oh, he just taps out? Dark! Did he lose? Did he eat a Disruptor hit or something? Or... Good showtime. With, uh... Not, not a climactic moment, but instead just... Well... Oh. 
Uh, oh, oh, we hit the shot. Oh, Dark looked the wrong way for a moment and Showtime laid into him. He finally lands the connection. Showtime drags Dark to the mat and pummels him into submission. What a game from D Mala. He goes, and it, honestly, I feel that's a game that I feel like Showtime could have played 30 more minutes. Not like he had the money for it, but just that, like, his mentality. It seemed like he never, he, just the, uh, he was, so, the consistency. I don't know how to describe it. I don't have the words to describe it. I'm sure Showtime would. A very even keel the entire time. And that means right now Dark still has to scale the wall in order to put a, a single point on the board. I don't know, that, that joke didn't really land, but finally the disruptors did. Game two's on Ancient Sister. Wow. One of the longer games, but it didn't feel... That game... Didn't... We didn't see carriers. We didn't see at any point players retreating to their corners and building up the death ball. Despite how uh, dangerous the armies were, they were both armies that had to be close enough to at least take some pot shots. Uh, kind of unlike lurkers, unlike broodlords, unlike carriers. We didn't even see. I think he researched Storm at some point, but we never even saw it. Showtime. I'm just so impressed. Well, he sniped the hive and Dark. I, I, I do wonder. Like, Dark, it, it felt like he was trying to end the game, whereas Showtime was just trying to continue it. So that was the difference. Like, he never... I don't ever think he went back up to Hive. And once the hive died... That was the end of... He, he never even built, like, Lurkers or, or Vipers or any of that Hive tech, so... Uh, most players in Dark's defense, most players do die to the Ravager Link Bane. There are so many opportunities to do devastating damage. With macro like Dark's, all you need to do is hit the probes once or twice with those plus two Banelings, and it completely undercuts the ability of Protoss to replace that army. And uh, after one or two waves of Ravager Bane, you just start overrunning things. They just don't have enough to defend. Uh, but most players are already transitioning into carriers by that point. So that creates a, a bit more of a dynamic situation. But Showtime saw that Dark was still on the mid-game army. He matched him on the ground. A in fact, he beat him on the ground. Which, wow. Now, let's see if uh, we can have a repeat performance. This time, the Adepts, nothing. Nothing so far. Not even a Zergling. It was a bit of a rough start and rough mid-game for Dark. He lost five drones to Adepts. He lost another half dozen or so to Oracles. And uh, the damage kind of kept chipping away at him. This time around, though, Dark has not lost a single drone. He's not going to be able to delay the third base, or he shouldn't be able to delay the third base. Um, Oracle comes in. Yeah, showtime. Ooh. You see, his Oracles thrive on, on red HP. Makes him feel alive. They'll never be repaired. All right. Only, only with the threat of death. Do they truly feel effective? Which is a bit concerning, but, you know, Protoss probably aren't the most mentally healthy creatures. And I'm pretty sure Oracles are robots, but I don't know if they have a pilot. And also, do I care? A little. Not much, though. Like, it'd be a fun fact, but... And then I'll move on. Kind of... Five Adepts. Shading in, taking a look around. No uh, glaives on the way. A Robo. As well as sentries. Out of Showtime. 
something a little different here. And what else are we looking at over here? Plus one attack. No twilight. And a grand total of... Oh, he's got the uh, triple oracle. The triumvirate. Dark is up to 60 drones and counting. He's already got a lair done. Adding more gases on. Hmm. Plus one ranged attack. Wait, does he have a roach one? Yes, but where's the roach speed? Ah. Uh, okay, Dark. Where's the infestation pit? Is he waiting to... Either that or Mass Ravager. It, it's been a little while since anyone's even attempted it, so I don't know... Ah! Uh-huh. Now, will there be a Nidus? It's a swarm... What I was getting to, by the way, I was alluding to. Swarm host. It was either swarm host, spire, but spire is unlikely in this scenario. One, because Showtime's already on a solid three bases. He would have started the spire immediately after finishing the lair. The lack of roach speed. Then, like, that was just a mistake. The lack of roach speed is not so much... I don't know if he was trying to trick Showtime. I doubt it, because he's definitely going to want Roach Speed in a moment here. Ah, there's the Nidus. But getting all that gas, you don't even need that much gas for Swarm Host, but Ravagers, uh, it doesn't hurt too much, and you need a lot of gas for Nidus, Ravagers, Swarm Host, all these things. Here's the thing. Seven drones have died, but almost all the drone kills were after Dark was already over 50. He's not suffering from that same issue I was talking about in the first game, which is the uh, Larva. He, he didn't really have his production stalled in any meaningful way. It just kind of came down to the cost of replacing the drones as opposed to um, handicapping his economy. So that means, has Showtime seen it? He has not seen the infestation pit. He has seen the Nidus and the Oracles. Oh, Ricky and the boys. Not an accident this time. Revelation on the Swarm Host. But that won't help him. Well, how does Showtime respond to this? He's now... Well, now he knows. It's going to be Swarm House. It is Swarm House. There is no going to be about it. Uh-oh. The first wave. Uh, an incredibly important one. Dark... Oh my god, he didn't notice the stasis. He overruns the fourth base. The stasis... So the Locust do time out in stasis. The only unit that can be killed in stasis is the Locust, which is very sad for them. Hive is on the way behind. Dark already has 74 drones. Disruptor shot. Ooh, nice hit. Uh, against the Roach Ravager, but... You gotta deal with the swarm house. There's more. DTs! What a defense! Now that's something. Now the problem is. Oh, shield battery overcharge. You gotta pat that Nexus on the back. The DTs kill the locust so fast. This is such a crazy game. Like, the DTs are actually kind of an incredible. Now, this is like a ca that campaign mission. You make the invisible DT walls and try to snipe all the overseers, and you better snipe all the overseers because those DTs will die immediately to the locust. But that's so many swords. Don't get back in it, Ricky. Get back inside. Oh wait, he's just waiting for it. Can he get back in the Nidus? Maybe. Disruptor shots fade away. Targets it down. Looks for another one. Big connection. Guardian shield help it out. But the locusts are coming. We cannot get out. They are coming. And Dark, instead of retreating back inside the Nidus, held his ground like the, the sheer biomass of the Swarmos. Dark is maxed out. Showtime had a clever defense. But I think he, he was just unprepared for the sheer commitment.
dark like this wasn't oh no i guess i'll go swarm host this was i'm going swarm host i've gone swarm host before you even realize that swarm hosts were an option i think he saw the robo and th and and thus demonstrated why protoss usually avoid going robo uh as it opens you up to a lot of unsavory uh strategies that usually are are less effective a Twilight Council gives you mobility. A Stargate gives you air units. But a Robo means you must fight directly on the ground. And the Swarm Hosts don't fight fair. Lurker Den is on the way. Dark has not, like, now showtime. Really start. He's already lost more minerals and gas. He's only on three bases. The Roach Ravager. Only two Swarm Hosts have been lost. He has 15 of them in the Nidus right now. A Roach Ravager is just... It's annoying enough to keep him busy. The Disruptors? Showtime has, has taken much better care of his Disruptors than your average Protoss. So many times we see like eight Disruptors and then six of them die before the fight starts. Showtime usually only has like three or four. But he does take good care of them. At the end of the day, though, he's fighting a delaying action. Dark drops a few locusts, triggers the stasis, and then just melts the nexus. Showtime coming across with a pretty sizable army here. If he can fight without the locusts getting involved. Disruptors, though. Oh my god, he's been surrounded. There's just not enough here. And this is without the swarm host getting involved. Dark! Oh, he strikes back. Beautifully done. One of the most clean swarm host builds I've ever seen. Which, you know, is mostly just dark playing with swarm host, so. But, I think it was a near direct response to uh, seeing that robotics facility. And uh, I doubt we're going to see it quite so early again. Showtime giving it a shot, but we never saw it come to fruition. <sighs> Game three. We head to Gresvin. Jimmy, please. All tied up one to one. I loved what Showtime came up with to defend. Now, the at the end of the day, the issue was he was fighting a delaying action against free units. Which, if he could have done it with just things like stasis and DTs without ever having to fight otherwise, well then, you're kind of fighting free units with spellcasters, which is okay. But... It's the Roach Ravager Strike Force that's uh, rotating around essentially wherever you're not. Denying bases. There's enough economy behind to keep tacking up. Dark showing. That swarm hosts are not extinct quite yet. Archaic, it's like a fax machine, okay? Um, you pull it out every now and again to work with some sort of business or... Uh, some sort of... It's like uh, the computers with running the nukes still on DOS or something. I don't know. that they, I am secondhand retelling using whatever technology they were originally designed on because uh, nobody wants to accidentally break it updating the Windows XP Service Pack 2. Okay. <sighs> what was my point, though? Swarm house, yes. Um. Ah, Jimmy, edit that one out. I, I have no idea. Please, in post. What do you mean we don't have post? I don't, what am I paying you for? That was a metaphor. I don't, pride in accomplishment. Anyways, um. 
adept takes a look around honestly well he gets a creep tumor game one and much of the early game was predicated on on those adepts doing pretty significant damage as a zerg it really does feel like you're you're fighting um from behind after taking more than one or two drones of damage from the first adepts and Showtime, in these past two games, has not found that same level of damage. So we will see. The Oracle coming across. Three Adept Shading out. Dark, using that Overlord. Hmm. The Adept Shades cancel at the last moment. Um. Well. Eh. Eh. I mean, he keeps the, the probe alive. He gets the Nexus. Loses two Adepts. Dark, not able to delay the third meaningfully. So, I'd call it fine. Adepts are not a unit that really ages well. Um, past the early game shenanigans and uh, Zergling defense, they're just kind of outshined by either Zealots as a frontline unit or Stalkers and Archons as a ranged one. Adepts always kind of mediocre at both those roles but they're really good at being annoying and killing drones so showtime demonstrating that here today gets four drones oracles into the main gonna find a few more eight drones in total now it's adding up and these are pre-50 i i that's an arbitrary cutoff but pre-50 drones any losses really cut into it So Dark taking some significant damage, despite not being quite as early. There's the Robo. Okay. So this time around, Showtime is going to go Robo, but he's going to do it with a bit more damage, with a, a bit more of a, a leash on Dark's economy. And he has two Oracles still intact on the other side of the map. He's going to have a great bead. Wait, he hasn't seen the lair timing yet. Though, has he seen more gases being added? What at the third? Immortals on the way, plus one. Showtime at 58 probes. Dark now catching up in drones. There is no roach warrant. So he's getting plus one ma- Mutas? Dark all over the tech tree here. Mutas! A bold move. Another one of the reasons why going robo is usually um, risky business uh, on the best of days. As, of course, the robotics facility does not have any units with anti-air capabilities. So, showtime. He will see the double gas. He will see the amount of queens. He will see the evo chamber upgrading. But he will not see the spire. And as long as one of those queens doesn't accidentally move past the spire, trying to inject or something like that, and it doesn't look like Showtime will have any warning. Now, of course, he's going with the aggressive defense. He's pushing out, and uh, the Zerglings will surround. I don't think he's going to get... He saves the Immortal with a force field. I don't know if he needed the force field, but it certainly doesn't hurt. More prisms on the way. Dark is trying to bank up money for Mutas right now. He's got 1,000, 1,000 in the bank. The Spire a few seconds out, but Showtime is knocking on the door. Will the Mutas be out in time to answer? 11. Mutas on the way. Oh, burning around. The Oracle's covering his back. 12 Mutas, though. What's the anti here? There are four Stalkers and three Sentries. Showtime. This attack is looking great. I, I bet he's wondering what he's building. Oh my god, showtime. I mean, it's not a huge logical leap. He sees the spire now, but he started a phoenix before ever seeing it. He's like, excuse me, sir, why do you have nothing? <laughs> and well, there's a pretty good reason for that. The mutas are out. The stalker count is high enough to get him to turn around, which is quite unfortunate. Dark actually loses 21 drones. And even if the Muta count is high enough, Showtime may have hit that timing just in between. Like, the Mutas just did not kick in in time. 
Oh, and that's it. Showtime two to one. What a play. I, oh, I did not expect to be wrapping up the commentary for the series there, but here we are. And Showtime just hits dark uh, with a knockout blow. Two games in a fraction of the time of the first one. But, well, the Swarm host seemed to be the more reliable option. Showtime lining up a great timing to show Dark who's boss. And uh, the wall stands tall. And Dark unable to fly over it. I was excited for Mutas to be a thing, but Showtime demonstrates why so often they're not. Well, quite a dynamic series. Showtime. Impressive defensive Protoss, though Dark bringing kind of some um, off-center builds out today. Uh, entertaining as always, but this time, Showtime. Okay, we did that. We did that joke already. All right. But you know what's not a joke? Good games for the fans. You can find more every single day. Um, maybe not a new one every single day, but at least uh, check out YouTube. No, we're already on YouTube. Oh my god. Jimmy, we're gonna need to edit this one in photo. I swear. That, what do you mean nobody watches the end anyways? Thank you for watching. 1,094? 94. 94. Uh, good luck, have fun. I hope I made your day a little bit better. I'll see you next time. Uh, stay tuned.